I assure you tonight the Lord will surprise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord who brought us together will give you a testimony he will move above and beyond your request in the name of Jesus Christ especially for those of us who came from far believe me you are not going to waste your time Even if I were a herbalist, if you came from a long distance, I would use the best of the ability within my power to bless you. Even if it were for my name's sake, I would still do it. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly Father? How much more shall your heavenly Father? In one minute, just say, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. In the name of Jesus, be seated. Please, God bless you. Welcome to our miracle service for the month of October. Those outside, we welcome you. Those following online, you are welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who brought us together will do us good tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to welcome everyone coming from far. Thank you so much for taking all the trips, the sacrifice, and for the thousands of people following us online thank you the lord will touch you distance is no barrier in the spirit in the name of jesus christ please help me appreciate my friend pastor pete rock god bless you bless you bless you hallelujah happy to see you again i honor you sir god bless you and pastor jakes is in the house hallelujah praise the lord Thank you so much i honor every man woman of god in this place the lord will lift you in jesus name tonight we are here to attack barrenness and um, we are here to challenge it call it the name it is and tell it where to go to in the name of jesus christ tonight we are here to attack on fruitfulness we are here to challenge lack of results. It's important to know why we are here tonight. Are we together now? And that means everything that has refused to leave you must go this night. Yeah. Nothing goes by itself. A force greater than it will have to dislodge it. And that power is available tonight. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 21 verse 1. Genesis 21 verse 1 Genesis 21 verse 1 verse 1 And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Put your name there. Are you ready to read? One to read. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he has said. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he has spoken. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has declared that this is a miracle service for the month of October. And he will do as he has spoken. In the name of Jesus. Just to guide us through a few things to challenge our faith and then we'll get to the business of the night um, I found some very interesting things while I prepared for this service and I just want to challenge our hearts in the name of Jesus praise the Lord Genesis 1 28 the Bible tells us how that God made man and God gave him specific instructions genesis 1 28 was not an advice it was not a suggestion it was a command are we together and when god gives a command we are supposed to obey it says and god blessed them and said unto them the first word be fruitful he said unto them he didn't say there's an opportunity to be fruitful and i hope that you consider it it was a command be fruitful then he says multiply multiply 
reproduce yourself and your kind and then he says replenish the earth and subdue it he says and have sovereign control or dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so god made man and gave him adam an instruction and in that instruction he said be fruitful it was not an advice it was not a suggestion it was not his opinion for your consideration are we together now the same way he said ye must be born again that means ye must be fruitful be fruitful and then he says multiply the best description of this verse is found in isaiah 32 verse 15 be fruitful and multiply he says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then he says the wilderness see the levels will be counted for a fruitful vine that's a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's not fruitfulness that's multiplication are we together so he says be fruitful meaning if you are not fruitful something is making you live in disobedience it's not about your benefit you are insulting the command of god be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion and you see it is in the character of satan listen please it's in the character of satan to carefully hear what god has said because his assignment is to prove that the lordship of christ is a mirage and so his the, the his assignment begins only when god speaks satan cannot do anything if god has not spoken because his job is to make the word of god of non-effect so he listens carefully and he's patient isn't it interesting that even to destroy you it is activated at the coming of god's word if god has not said anything about you satan has nothing to do to you because his assignment is to oppose the word of god so i could imagine satan carefully paying attention to the speakings of god and when he told man be fruitful i can imagine satan telling the demons assignment number one barrenness multiply keep people in one place and so he goes around attempting to insult the integrity of god's word to the end that our conviction about god will be questioned and then ultimately we will lose trust and confidence in him be fruitful multiply be fruitful multiply be fruitful the concept of barrenness listen listen barrenness is not the absence of a child barrenness is the absence of results any kind of result any kind of results the inability to produce desired results children finances the level of influence the level of growth any any um, activity that is able to inhibit us from producing to capacity is called barrenness are we together now jesus did not hide his opinion about barrenness when he saw the tree that had leaves and would not produce figs the bible did not say let's give it time as it were in other parables he usually it was in his culture to be patient but not with barrenness are you hearing what i'm saying now it was in the character of jesus to see an unfruitful tree and then say okay give it time maybe they didn't water it well but when he was aware it was barrenness he cost it immediately are we together now we do not serve the lord for results however at a point in our christian experience there must come a time when our lives will begin to relate with the possibilities that are in god 
this relationship that we call results prove two things number one the love and the goodness of god it's important the goodness of god is a dimension of his glory that reveals his benevolence his ability to freely give there is such a dimension of god's glory called his goodness are we together and so barrenness is a very dangerous force do you know while i was studying uh preparing for this miracle service i discovered generally speaking but specifically to barrenness now fruitfulness fruit of the womb do you know it is said that six out of every ten families six out of every ten families have one kind of fruitfulness or fertility problem where was barrenness when our grandparents gave birth to 15 children without CS? I'll tell you where it were. Those our parents were idol worshippers. So there was nothing to attack. So one woman gave birth to 15 children without twins. One, 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 one. Under hot fire with knives. And yet after 15 children she would stand strong but the moment you declare that you are signing to another government satan now came up with a system to stop the continuity of god's agenda listen let me tell you there is a bridge between us and the next prophetic speakings of god most of our parents and grandparents did not give their lives to christ or did not walk in the fullness of the system of the kingdom we became the fruit of that carelessness somewhere along our journey to adulthood God intercepted prophetically and started leading us to understand the systems of God and already that that is a transgenerational threat to the gate of hell because the meaning of that is that a generation will come that does not know wickedness a generation will come that does not know father fighting mother a generation will come that does not know um, all these kinds of things there will be a generation that will corporately lift up the name of the Lord and Satan said no way so the first assignment is to stop your faith if it happens that you have passed that level then he now finds a system to keep you alone with your conviction till you die so that it will end the process are we together now Hmm. let me tell you something reproduction is a powerful thing it's not about giving birth to children it's about reproducing your values it's about giving God more space I hope you know that without a material body God cannot find expression and not everybody can host him a body has thou prepared for me so our generation is preparing bodies and this is a threat to the gate of darkness barrenness is not about refusing to make you take in no it's not about impotency no barrenness is an agenda it's an agenda to stop any platform that can create continuity of people raised after the image of their fathers and mothers who are themselves after the image of god our dispensation was the first to reveal the possibility of reproduction through birth every other dispensation before our church age had creation not reproduction are we together now and so god will create the celestial beings were created now when god created adam i hope you know that satan was once in heaven he had never seen the possibility of reproduction through birth that a man and a woman can come through a system of reproduction and give birth to another human being it was not part of his understanding so when adam and eve fell he knew that there was no possibility again and then to his surprise he saw eve pregnant now this was strange he didn't even know the name of what it was what causing this woman's stomach to protrude after nine months here comes another person and satan knew that this is a strategy that means 
whatever is in a man can be reproduced through many children that means a woman can actually hold a child i told you women are gates in the spirit women are gates in the spirit that's why demons oppress them it's not gender the only gates that can authorize another life to be made flesh so barrenness is an agenda marriage is just the focal point of that warfare but that's not the only place are we together there is nothing that gives satan joy as watching the frustration that comes in the life of a believer as a result of repeated frustration and stagnation the human spirit was designed to be motivated on the strength of progress everything that is alive grows everything that is alive moves lack of growth and progress is a symbol of death are we together now so it appears in different forms a lady will keep herself and serve God a man will keep himself and serve God sweating in the house of God and get married and all of a sudden hilarious medical reports begin to evolve themselves fibroid they say the man is impotent are we together now and then it continues like that um, my assignment tonight is to get you very angry with anything that looks like barrenness in your life you've heard the testimonies it should go it can go if you insist hallelujah mm. barrenness it's a terrible thing it's a terrible thing to live a barren life look around our society and you see barrenness speaking everywhere a man begins to build a house and for 10 years it has not gotten to linter level until he dies he leaves it there it's called barrenness it's called barrenness let me tell you something when you buy your first car at age 50 it's not a testimony are we together now when certain things do you know certain things in life have a time period when their coming will be relevant to your living there are it's not just that they should arrive they must arrive on time so that they can be used for the purpose for which they came hmm. are we together now barrenness there's some fruitfulness everywhere there are people's lives it's even consoling if one aspect of your life is working and then another aspect is not working at least he will give you the impetus to face it but there are people seated here nothing is working completely when i say nothing your health is not working your life is not working your brain is not working your body is not working your emotions are not working nothing is working it's called barrenness it's an agenda if you see it as an issue you will not address it enough when you see it as an agenda a plot you will destroy it with every sense of seriousness don't just look at it as an issue that is just embarrassing me that's too small a motivation to fight it look at it as an agenda that seeks to be transgenerational and then you attack it whether you have a child or not this is not for people who do not have children you know we have this ugly religious mindset of saying at least i have uh, my first um sets of children twins i have another twins what am i looking for that's even a sign that your brain is barren you may not be barren in terms of physical barrenness but it's all working well the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age he said and the lord had blessed him in all things second kings chapter 5 says naaman there was a man called naaman he said he was a captain of the syrian army and the bible says he was a man who was valiant for wars he was leprous when i was preparing for this meeting i took a clean sheet of paper to write out everything that was working in my life and everything that was not working and i presented it to god i said lord we are flogging it out this night don't sit down fooling yourself just focusing on the things that are working thank god for them but do not say because five things are working let me let the other two you must force those two to work 
Say amen. amen. Let me give you a few scriptures specifically for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I don't know how you will motivate yourself tonight, but believe God, believe God, believe God. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Please help us media. Let's be very fast. There's a lot to do tonight. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. I want you to read it please if you're a child of God. Read it loud. One to read. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Uh huh. There shall not be male or female barren among you or your what? The only people obeying this scripture are animals the only sets of people obeying this scripture are animals they don't pray they don't fast they give birth anyhow anywhere under any condition any condition it says thou shalt be blessed above all people there shall not be male or female Men can be barren. Women can be barren. Pastors can be barren. Parents can be barren. Families can be barren. Territories and nations can be barren. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And then it says there shall not be male or female barren among you. That means if you are experiencing any form of barrenness, it cannot be God. I'm giving you reason to attack these things as from the devil. Do not create any theology under any circumstance to justify barrenness of any sort. Don't be embarrassed by it, but summon the courage tonight to call it what it is and face it squarely. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5 Psalm 127 please verse 3 to 5 very quickly it says lo read it please children are what um, this scripture is a very powerful scripture it never said children come from men the seed that gives them bodies come from men. But children are a heritage from the Lord. Read on please. We are not done media. It says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children that are giving birth to early. So are the children that are giving birth to early. You are, it's not just the children of your youth. There is something about youthfulness and giving birth. Even biologically, without any sense of insult, but even biologically we understand that when a woman has stayed so long and is about to give, to, to give birth, there, there are certain kinds of sicknesses and imperfections and deformities that may likely happen like down syndrome and so on and so forth the bible talks about the children of your youth verse 5 happy is the man whose quiver is what i don't know about you but i don't believe in having only one child because two is at least the number of witness. And there are certain things that only happen when two or three. Ah, come on now. I'm preaching to somebody. Go ahead. Respect your ideology. But the more you know God, the more you become a believer. Hallelujah. Happy. He didn't say sad. Children can make men happy. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I have met wealthy people who the only thing they pray for is a child. Are we together? They will pay any amount. They will go any length. They just need a child. Not prosperity, not a job. Happy is the man that his quiver is full of them. He says they shall not be. 
Society has an ugly way of stigmatizing people. In every area of barrenness, but especially on fruitfulness. Especially in Nigeria. The average time they give you is two weeks. Once you are married, people are, or it's ladies that first start. They look at the signs, they look at your face. The men don't know, they don't care. To, they will catch up later after four or five months. I mean, but the women, they're already looking. And then after two months, someone will confront you and say jokes. Ah, when is Junior coming? Now, you think it's a joke. After a few months, they won't laugh about it when they are saying it again. We live in a society, especially Africa. After nine months, if you cannot give birth to a child, your persecution starts immediately. Are we together? And then I'm still surprised that with the age of knowledge and intelligence, we still have all kinds of people, you know, driven by culture and all of these cultural ideologies. Oh, I married a witch. That's the reason why I'm not giving birth and all of that and so on and so forth. If the man, your seed is required for the woman and she's a witch, what are you? For it not working. You see that? We victimize women shamefully. And then we think, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is a stupid woman that I got married to. No, no. Listen, listen. Barrenness is an entirely spiritual thing. Forget about the medical report you came with. I am telling you, the origin of barrenness. The, see, barrenness, fibroid, and all kinds of demonic operations, they are related. It's the same system that brought them. Listen to me. Fibroid is an attempt to mimic a child between you and a spirit. Fibroid is not just an object growing. Is growing at a pace that is not consistent with your normal body growth. Meaning another life is sponsoring it. Are we together now? Yeah. So you have a woman get pregnant. She's rejoicing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The moment the doctor announces. She goes to bed in the night. And all kinds of strangers. Depending on what episode. A man, a woman. All kinds of people come and the next thing the woman has lost the pregnancy. And while people are insulting her because we live in a society that, that who, whose conscience has been so numbed, we can insult people without finding what is going on. The cure for barrenness is not counseling. Counseling does not drive out demons. Fibroid is real. You can feel it. It can destroy you. Impotency is real. Whether you believe it or not. And do you know. This affects Christians more. Because we are guided by certain principles until marriage. So there is no room to ordinarily find out what is wrong with you. You just marry and get the shock immediately. That, that quest for obedience prepared the healthy environment for Satan to manifest it. But the devil is a liar tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I once prayed for a woman who said she would be sitting down. God is my witness. And physically, pastor, physically, physically, feel a man come to her as though sleeping with her. I'm, I don't mean in a, in a vision. Wide awake any time of the day, that stranger just comes. Claiming legal rights and holds over God's people and stopping them for years. Let me tell you another thing with barrenness. It does not live by itself. Any kind of barrenness. One day, my miracle will come. It's not a wise approach. Not with barrenness. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. You've got to get up and say today. Today is the day. One day, is, it, it looks like a consolation, but you never receive results from it. One day, I know I will build that house. One day, I know. Abba, is it not turn by turn? There are all kinds of wise sayings. Life is turn by turn. Are you joking? There are some people who died. Their turn never came. You force your turn. Brothers and sisters, this thing is by force. You force your turn. 
you force your turn time and chance happens to all he didn't say they receive it it just says in god's equation he made provision for everyone to have it as i'm speaking to you i'm very angry in my spirit because some things must change this night in the name of jesus christ i know families who have spent millions literally looking for the fruit of the womb i know families who have been depressed and all kinds of things do you know the one that pains me more when a pastor becomes barren that 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 one that one gets to me is is personal you know why because satan is like putting a billboard on the man's life i am at work and there's nothing you can do about it it's very painful it's very painful i've had the privilege of meeting men of god in different places and their one prayer they come to me in the secret and they cry they say man of god i lay my hands on others they come back with twins they come back with this but i've not been able to have a child and we have members whose mouths don't keep quiet we run our mouths around with different episodes of what we think might be the explanation supporting the barrenness rather than taking it personal and go to God and say no Lord something must be done do you know what Abraham would have gone through 25 years barrenness hallelujah how about other aspects of barrenness the inability for you to produce results in ministry to the point that you are now doubting whether you are called or not are we together now you used to shout before and say i know god called me but after two years with seven members alone you're already keeping quiet now and say the most important thing is i'm obeying you you see let me tell you, lack of result makes you to hide certain convictions you will be forced to hide them that's how satan stops people he doesn't shut your mouth he stops the area of results but we are going to pray listen tonight i don't want you to feel embarrassed about confronting anything that is barrenness in your life are we together now we're a family of faith and we're going to cry before the god of heaven and say lord open strange doors open strange doors open a door that no man can shut hallelujah there are pastors who are supposed to be at a level they they are doing everything scripturally that should bring the kind of results they want and yet nothing is working absolutely nothing is working no ministry people come receive miracles and go all kinds of things happen one day my result will come is a deception from hell i'm telling you this again you must insist and say i make that one day today psalm 113 verse 9 psalm 113 verse 9 please help us media psalm 113 verse 9 this is what will be somebody's story after this miracle service it says he make it who makes it ah and we're standing here only because you made he make it so god can make it happen it is within his power to make it happen he make it the barren woman to keep house and then he says to be a joyful mother of what the only reason why you should stop giving birth is mutual understanding between you and your wife not a situation that has pegged you and saying that child will not come no a joyful mother a joyful mother of children a joyful mother of children one last scripture exodus 23 verse 26 exodus 23 i'd like you to read it one to read there shall nothing cast her young nor be buried in thy land he didn't say there shall no one he said nothing nothing do you know 
Your money can be barren. Many other things in your life can be barren. He says, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get angry. To know that every trace of barrenness, regardless of how it appears, is of the devil and must be dealt with as such. Three keys to fruitfulness, very quickly. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power Perform miracles There is nothing That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you made Three keys very quickly to fruitfulness The first key is to treat fruitfulness as a command Have an understanding that fruitfulness is not an opinion. It's not an opinion that is left to your personal desire. Fruitfulness is a command. Fruitfulness is a command. Genesis 1.28 Fruitfulness is a command. Anything that is not fruitful in your life is causing your life to be disobedient towards the word of God. Anything anything the moment you see your life not producing result in any aspect there is a spirit forcing your life to reflect obedience disobedience fruitfulness is a command barrenness is an attempt to make you violate that command number two the second key to fruitfulness is that obedience to kingdom principles will deliver the desired result it's not enough to have the understanding that is a command there are principles that compel your partnership with the word of god in order to get that result principles scattered through scripture are several principles that are responsible for certain manifestations of god's grace in our lives are we together Praise God. Are we together now? Sorry about that. Obedience to kingdom principles will deliver desired result. Listen, please. Wishing and crying helps you, but it does not help your situation. Are we together now? God is moved by your tears, but he only responds to his word. He's moved by your tears. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It's called compassion. But for results to happen in your life, you must activate the word. The woman with the issue of blood had been crying, but nothing happened. But she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Obedience to kingdom principles. For instance, when it comes to finances, your tithe, your giving, Kingdom investments and the opportunity and the platform to provide value remain the irrefutable keys to wealth and abundance. There is no theology around it. Are we together? There is no magic and mysticism around it. Obedience to kingdom principles. Now, most of us want miracles of fruitfulness. Listen. We want miracles of fruitfulness in our lives. But we are unwilling to pay that price of alignment. There are people who are not consistent tithers. They have an idea that tithing is, um, is a system. Men of God just corner the money and they enjoy it. I mean, that, that, that is such a deception. See how cheap you gave yourself to Satan. How much is what you are bringing? For you to believe that is the reason why a man will compromise on his faith. There are all kinds of theological ideas 
sponsored by the gate of hell that keep people poor. Are we together? How about trusting and believing God to make you whole? Do you know there are people who do not believe? Listen, listen. There are people who do not believe in some of these testimonies you hear in the church. Maybe not in Koinonia, but in the body of Christ. When they hear something like fibroid disappear, they just look and say, oh, we agree. They don't lie. Let's clap. You see, we, we mock ourselves because we have so fraternized with unbelief. It has become our template. You never refuse to agree that the person was not born with the growth. It came from nowhere. You believe that one. That it went back to where it came from. You don't believe it. Are we together? Oh, someone's genotype changed. Or a woman gave birth to triplets and twins. Some of you, where is the woman? Let her come. Let's see. I must see with my own eyes. You see, let me tell you something. Do not over-intellectualize spiritual things. They are far beyond the realm of the intellect. If you learn to believe God with childlike faith and say, Lord, I know this is true. When will you believe? Are we together? Honestly, there are some of us, we have never really believed anything truly. You have only been aware that it happened. But that conviction, no. I'm a believer. I believe God. I believe God. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Especially for those of us, listen, especially for those of us who, who claim to be a light, we have allowed education to take the place of God. And then we want God to give you a science on how these things will happen. Are we together now? God, you need to show me how this will be this and produce this. And then God says, me? Give you that explanation? The Bible says for us, you do not know the way of the wind. Nor how bones are formed in her that has a child. How a seed, a little seed from a man becomes the bones of a child that you cannot break with your hand. Explain that mystery. Say so you do not know the way of God. Tonight I want you to believe. Don't sit down asking. Will this genotype really change? Will I really be delivered? Will God bless me just like that? I remember one time. People were joining the queue. I think some months ago. Just to see me after service. And then um, a particular. I think it was a lady or so. Just met me and she was ranting all her problems. What she felt, you know, she felt, look, I need special time. And I just touched her. I said, it's done. She said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm trying to explain. I said, it's done. What are all these long stories you are? It's done. I touched you. I said, it's done. Now, I know what her problem will be. Even if his pain is not on her head. You just touch me and say, it's done. That's how it works. It works at the speed of faith. The woman with the issue of blood did not touch the hands of Jesus. She touched the hem. Frankly, any part she touched would have produced the same result. It was never about what she touched. Are we together now? We have seen all kinds of testimonies just with one word. Just with one supernatural word. My neighbor then, I think she's somewhere here. She shared her testimony here. You've heard the testimony of the miracle that God did. Supernatural miracle. All kinds of devilish things. And they said all kinds of things were, you know, growing and all of that in her stomach. It came out. It passed out like a woman gives birth to a child. That's how it came. Oh, come on. See, this God, eh? Miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Would you come and do a miracle? A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. One of the strategies of Satan in this season is to plant nonsense in the bodies of ladies. Very healthy lady, eating well. The moment she's about to marry, they will tell you something is wrong. Ovarian cyst. 
fibroid somewhere or they'll say the womb has disappeared are we together fashions of stories sincerely communicated by well-meaning doctors but that's a manipulation somewhere are we together now to an extent some of you ladies now are looking at me you are even afraid you are not even sure you see all kinds of people even if you are prophesying about finances they are laying hands on their womb and say lord my own is not money just make sure that i give birth when has a good thing become a thing of fear are we together now and then the, the one that surprises me is the concept of impotency where they say a man no 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 that concept is a mirage plus plus you better disbelieve it gentlemen listen gentlemen listen to me don't ever don't ever i say it again allow anything to convince you that there is such a possibility like that it is it is it is an advanced form of witchcraft in the life of any man are we together now don't think i'm just talking i know what i'm saying what you tolerate you will never change what you give flimsy excuses for you it will never leave you hallelujah praise the lord tonight i want you to challenge yourself and tell yourself i must have testimonies fruitfulness is a command number two obedience to the principles of the kingdom is required to deliver your desired result the last point i'll give us and then we'll pray is that in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony now you better believe this in many cases obadiah 117 in many cases warfare slash deliverance may be required to receive your testimony that's not because you are a witch that's not because you are a wizard away with that imbalanced communication to think that the moment devils are casted out of lives and people it means that they are possessed no not at all not at all not at all and the way with that wrong understanding a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be greatly influenced your faculties can come under siege siege that will look like you are possessed of devils make sure that the construction of your belief is based on the word of god so that you don't shortchange yourself of certain possibilities Look at me. There are many of us here seated looking at me. There are spirits sitting comfortably upon our lives and destinies. Every time things are not going well in your life and you do the best you can to keep certain kingdom principles, then I want you to know that you are not alone in that system. There is a stranger attempting to add to the equation something you did not add. If you keep quiet, that's how your life will go. warfare deliverance contending with the powers that be satan will not let you go just because god said to it takes force a popular scripture that has become our anthem in this place psalm 66 verse 3 how terrible are thou in your ways he said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through the greatness of your discussion it takes power don't see listen you are you are coming from a family with transgenerational witchcraft i know you are in christ but listen satan does not care all that grammar is none of his business it, you have to prove you are in christ by taking advantage of the power that came through christ to put him where he belongs he says satan he said god had put all things under his feet speaking of man he said but as it is now we do not yet see all things under his feet faith is not foolishness you must summon the courage to confront things that have refused to go oh in the name of jesus christ i'm born again of this and that and that but you are seeing all of you you are seeing patterns that reflect a healthy living of wicked spirits jesus did not hide the fact that we are influenced perpetually 
by all kinds of spirits in our world who attempt to compromise on our testimony. It was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that shared how that when the ministry started, great ministry now, touching people across Africa and the world. But then when they started, people would not just come pastor. For whatever reason, a very anointed man, signs and wonders, epochal revelations, but people would not come. And one time they were praying, engaging in warfare, intense warfare in the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he came out. And then after he had moved a distance, the Holy Spirit told him, turn and face, you know, look at the building and all of that. And then he saw a thick layer covering it. And this was what the Lord told him. He said, this is the stronghold that makes people to misrepresent your ministry. Everything you do, they see it in a bad light. And he commanded it to go and it left. And all of a sudden there was, there was explosion. Kenneth E. Hagin teaching on his encounter with Jesus his book about his encounter with Jesus he gave a very dramatic scenario that happened between him and Jesus he said at a point when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him Jesus was talking to him and was giving him some instructions all of a sudden a devil like an imp a short devil just appeared in between them and was jumping up and down you know distracting Kenneth Hagin Kenneth Hagin said he taught Jesus Christ being there would stop that spirit from coming yet the spirit was there jumping up and down and jesus kept talking he seemed unaffected by whatever the demon was doing but kenneth hagin was affected and jesus kept speaking kenneth hagin said it worried him for a long time until he got angry in his spirit and the holy spirit gave him a strategy and he commanded that spirit he said in the name of jesus i rebuke you and he felt and, and left and this was what jesus told him according to kenneth Hagin. he said if you did not do anything about it i would not have done anything all that it is to be done i have done how can Shiria is nonsense the day you get up you the best way to predict your future is to create it create it create it don't sit down waiting for it to come create it listen i don't believe in circumstances i create any circumstance i want i create it the bible tells us that the word is framed 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 your world your environment your reality is framed by the word of god obadiah 1 17 it says and upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness then it says the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions standing between the sons of jacob and their possessions are gates forces fraternities covenants of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of god's people and then he says that there shall be deliverance deliverance is not falling down necessarily it's not just manifesting and coughing out things no the context of deliverance is a platform that creates a separation on a legal basis between you and any force that keeps you bound are we together there are things that have held our lives brothers and sisters and it must let us go you must believe this don't sit down I'm, I'm telling you this thing so you don't sit down and waste your time i came with my spirit angry we're going to deal with the issue of the fruit of the womb extensively but then i want you to know the reason why the door has not opened is because there is a spirit sitting somewhere and i tell you if you let those spirits they will wreck your life wreck your life there are pastors whose churches have refused to grow. And they think they preach well. They are anointed people. They are great people. But they are all kinds of forces. Brothers and sisters, wickedness is real. The Bible tells you the whole world lies in wickedness. Don't say I didn't do anything to anybody. The condition to be vulnerable to oppression is that you are born. Once you arrive here, that's all. You, you are in the middle of a story that predates your existence. So as you come, you just join in the whole thing. Don't you think you have to come up with a fresh trouble? No. It is there before you arrived. 
Have you not seen children hated for something their parents did before they got married? And they look at you and while they are insulting the man, they say, who is this? You say, my name is David. Who's, you are his child. You are the idiot like him. You just inherited an insult. Just because you were associated with a man while they were making that trouble, you were in the loins of eternity. And now you came and participated. Tonight, I want you to believe God. I want you to believe God. Brothers and sisters, there's enough grace and unction for you to receive the miracle. I believe in breakthrough. Breakthrough is a mystery that gives men speed. Where limits are taken. Kabbalataya. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. Limits are taken. I don't know what has held you down. You must break this limit. Don't sit carelessly looking. Some of you have some results. We all have different results, but is that the best? God can fast track your life. That between now and December 31st, he will put a new song in your mouth. A song of praise in your heart. He said many will see and fear and put their trust in him. Hallelujah. And time will fail me to speak of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought the mouth of, of lions, shut the mouth of lions, wrought righteousness. Let's look at one scripture. Romans 4, 18. I just want to touch a little on this issue of believing and faith. We just finished a series on faith. Please, I encourage everyone as God grants you grace, make sure you get those series and listen to them. But I just want to challenge our faith a little even as we prepare to pray. There's such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. Such a strong anointing. I'm hearing footsteps. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me he's the one walking to people's lives. I'm hearing footsteps. No, 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 no. I, I believe me. Just, just, just believe me. Just walk with me. I'm hearing footsteps right now. God will not let me continue. He's walking to someone's life right now. Right now. I'm hearing footsteps in the spirit. I'm still hearing footsteps. And the Holy Spirit is telling me this is his footsteps. He's walking to someone's life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know where those people are. But right now their stories must change. Must change. God is not even waiting for me to finish preaching. Something is happening here. Shabarato A change of story. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something must change. Something is happening right now. How forcible are right words. Sekatalatos. Empre toke telekata. Siketere to supatalalaya. Dekatash kabarita da bada bada bada. Sekreto si bada da bada da bada. Brante katalakoto supata. Footsteps. I still hear these footsteps. I still hear these footsteps in my ears. And God is saying He's giving people testimonies. It's like the Spirit of God walking. Walking. He will meet you where you are. He will meet you where you are. Shabala rabala rabala. Sit down. Sit down. Let's finish up. Romans 4 verse 18. Just sit down. The waters has been stirred. I just want to give you an understanding on faith. You have a role to play. Listen please. You have a role. Don't worry about what is happening. You have a role to play. Please hear me. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. You're not going to sit down and just expect to be healed. You have a role to be to play. Lift your hands, gentlemen. You raising your hand. I see an angel pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. Something looking like oil. That's what I see. I don't even know you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. 
my spirit is fired up i feel this thing on me now I feel this thing on me now i feel this anointing on me now i feel this thing on me now shake a tire about that it's the anointing that comes with the office i feel it on me right now a lady with a breast lump a lady with a breast lump has just been healed right now check yourself check yourself a lady with a breast lump the left side of your breast 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 the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now the bible says who against hope against hope have taught us against hope means in spite of the obstacles believed who against hope i told you the starting point of faith is the presence of an obstacle it is not unusual to see obstacles there is a system to take care of them that system is based on your conviction backed up by understanding that compels you to take action the name of that action is faith not the name of the believing believing is not faith believing is restful confidence based on an understanding the end product of believing is conviction when you act it the name given to that action is faith listen you can hear the most anointed word if you do not mix it with faith be convicted that this is the word of god and then be ready to take steps so if you are here and you cannot stand be ready to stand don't just sit down saying well let's see what will happen you will go back home on that wheelchair you are deaf you are blind whatever it is genotype whatever make sure you are anchoring your spirit a door has refused to open make sure that you receive there are many faith actions praise and celebrating god is an action that's how you water whatever you sow listen jesus said and i've corrected it here i've taught us he said if you have faith as a monster seed i've told you it's not the size if you have faith and your faith works like a monster seed a monster seed is sown that means if you can plant your faith and create an environment for it to grow in the similitude of a monster seed then you can say to this mountain he was not talking about the size of faith if you have faith and you have understood how to make it operate like a monster seed then you will do great things are we together tonight i want you to refuse that any force of darkness holding your destiny will go back with you i want you to refuse listen listen there is grace for increase i feel it in this place i just want you to believe me you know sometimes it's difficult communicating things to people because some we live in an environment of such unbelief i know the grace for increase listen increase is an unction honor is a mantle it can come upon a man you can carry it bodily don't sit down and just waste your time you may not be sick in your body but there is an encounter that produces a possibility upon your life listen i told you creation has never been disobedient something on you or not on you is what compels the response of creation an anointing is like a mantle it works like a charm when it is upon your life that anointing speaks is a language it will make creation respond to you in a certain way that's what you call favor that's what you call breakthrough don't sit down asking can i get a job that's a very foolish question very foolish question don't sit down asking can god make a way in the wilderness my god my god my god ah Don't sit down asking can i get the child no what you should be asking is can i get the twins or triplets 
Not can I get the child. Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them. No. Connect and open up your spirit. Man of God, open up for your ministry. There can be more. There can be more. There can be more. The pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going. There is a system that bails you out. Even favor, let me tell you, this favor that we think is very free, there are laws. There is an unction that brings favor. It is a manifestation of favor that is effortless. But there is a system, an exact system, a science to its coming into your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering, can God change me? Are you not seeing? Don't you see his signature all over? Listen, there are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom. There are dimensions of the power of God that has been vested in laws. You don't have to pray. The moment the laws are accurately um, operated, the power is released immediately. You don't have to be a Christian. But the third dimension, listen, the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with God. Listen. Men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me. You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing god when when saul came where samuel was just that atmosphere implicated him he prophesied all kinds of things happened to him You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see like cobwebs, is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants. Mysteries and covenants. Agreements with God that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen. I want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight. You are not alone. There is grace for you. Rise up on your feet. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You 
are mighty in this place faithful God hallelujah hallelujah you are mighty you are mighty in this place Before we begin to minister, I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for Him to do. Don't keep quiet. Don't say God knows. Open your mouth. Lord, step into my finances. Lord, step into my business. Lord, step into my family. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Se que para da bato sobra de la lava Lord take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening Take away the barrier oh God stopping my influence enlarge my coast papa tayaba Se que tele catara ba 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 prayers Lord I must take my testimony tonight I'm tired of this fibroid it dies this night this night it must go this night not tomorrow Lord favor must land upon my life I'm tired of struggling Favor must come upon my life. Sikepa kosoto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, hello, you reign. Na 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 na
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me and this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people, listen, two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play Mike. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. And I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now. By the Spirit of God. Kaduna State. Kaduna State. I see an anointing. Only Kaduna State. Shabarapakata. Embreketeta. Kaduna State. A miracle happening for Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete, help them please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to call in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? 
yeah, like a red dress or something like that. Stephanie, who is that? Stephanie. There is a Stephanie I'm seeing. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone and in the vision the Lord is showing me it's like a red dress, but I'll pray for you. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you witchcraft ends in your family. Witchcraft ends in your family. You will hear testimonies that will surprise you. Right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Now, it ends by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Johanna. 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 I'm hearing a name, Johanna. Please save our time. Johanna. I don't know who that person is. Johanna. I won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast. Johanna. 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 Whether you're here inside or outside. Johanna. 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 There is a lady following us from Lagos. Your name is Blessing. Your name is Blessing. You are in a room. You are following from a laptop. The Lord is saying I should tell you he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. He's bringing an end to the captivity of your family. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to pray. I tell you, I feel fire in this place. It's time to command deliverance. It's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives. Forces of darkness. The Lord is bringing deliverance to your family. Your family. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family. And the Lord is bringing deliverance right now. Right now to the family. Right now to the family. The Lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family. A major deliverance to the family. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. As I begin to pray for you, all those devils that has tied the lives of people it doesn't mean you are possessed it's not an insult you may not even know you may be minding yourself just like you're standing now i'm going to command those devils they must go they are not only going to live your life they must leave your family are we together listen some of you brought many prayer lists just one spirit living will produce all that testimony believe me believe me lift your hands my heart, my soul, I give to you. I bow to you, my Savior and King. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing to deliver, to set free. There are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they must go. I want you to bring them out now. They must go. They must go now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. You'll be surprised to see what happens. Kai, 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 Kai. I see spirits of delay. 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 Spirits that have held men down. All kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough, 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 flowing sound, my flowing sound. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Now I command those demons, go now, go now, go now. Kato Sotoba. Lift your voice and begin to command every spirit. Every devil. Help them please. Go now. I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now. Inside and outside. I command you. Inside and outside. Bring them out. I command you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. I command you. You must go now, now, by the anointing of the Spirit. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their 
our breakthrough. Lift your hands while still praying. Atasileka prosudo pariata kotusha. Prende kabrato soko tu baleyakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them. And the Lord is saying to unlock those chains. Unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus. Wherever they are. Any place in your life. That has been chained and tied. Right now in Jesus name. I command those gates be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, take it, take it, toss it, toss it, chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please, chains, be broken. In the name of Jesus, chains, be broken, be broken. Kala patoshaya, release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow, the roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here. Now, ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run. Help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus, guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Pato Sotobaya. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahas. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiancé. 
you have somebody there. Yes, sir. that's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying, I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past. Uh -uh. Your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus. God is giving you a job. May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before I pray. I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we we'll do a lot of other things. Before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout, I receive. Don't worry. Follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door of breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom Shalom You're mighty in this place Shalom Jehovah Shalom Shalom You welcome in this place I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit. Doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. Hmm. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen. There is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online you can follow. I want to pray. I, I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy. And I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God, 
Be established. Be established. Be established. Be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land. By the Spirit, go and build that house. By the Spirit, I open strange doors. Don't say you are too young. It's an anointing. It's not your effort. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now leave those who are standing here very quickly. If you are here specifically, please listen. You are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the doors. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? for you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child no matter what the spirit is no matter what the issue is fibroid 
infertility low sperm count whatever i don't care what the name is it must live right now in the name of jesus please shift very quickly as i lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my god i tell you i see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now carry it right now carry it right now miracle 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 there is an unusual grace here there is an unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace as i lay my hands on you it is done it is done it is done it is done heal now open up the gates in the name of jesus Grace, 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 help them please, let's save time, grace, receive your miracle baby, my God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored, receive it, take it, take it, Take it, take it, take it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it, take it, take it, take it in the name of Jesus. Bring it please. in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 Miracles in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Let it be open in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 grace. The Lord is healing. Irregular menstruation, irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. Now, return with your miracle child. Now. now 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 by the power of the holy ghost let her go now keep praying in the spirit don't just watch miracles 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 in the name of jesus in the name of jesus supernatural miracles the Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. 
grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka barato kato katele baba baba baba. Embrete kato. for you i want a woman to come up yes. i'm seeing a woman who is pregnant you have been having nightmares somebody comes to you in the night you have you even wake up shouting you've not been able to sleep there is a pregnant woman here with that situation god wants to set you free please where are you if you care for you can come and god will set you free right now you are pregnant but i'm seeing you having very bad dreams like a nightmare Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself, for someone. Ambrotosu brotosu brotosu bregedi balalaba. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living a real object please who is that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look, let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say this is bad it's like a doctor madam Kai. and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm saying. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dear, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster that will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now 
who knows probably were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile hold my hands man i'm angry in my spirit in the name of the lord god that i serve i speak to you from the depth of my spirit right now i command that devil let her go now out out in the name of jesus i lay my hands on your stomach i command that wicked spirit whatever your name is don't only leave her pack your load with you and go out of this woman's life I restore you even physiologically in the name of Jesus Christ this old face is not your own you are not that old I change it in the name of Jesus Christ help her give Jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of Jesus over in the name of Jesus it's over in the name of Jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here I'm seeing in a vision the power of God will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but I'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake father take her to that level I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir? For barrenness? You? Where is your wife, sir? She is here, but I can't locate her now. Madam, come. You will see a man like... Hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please? So that we save time. Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please. So that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. 
If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child, you will have children. Listen, sir, I'm not saying God told me to tell you. I am telling you, there is something called a prophet's reward. In the name that is above all names, I speak over your life. That force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity, I cancel it right now. Yeah. Sir, you are struggling financially. I have to pray for you. God wants to open a door for you. I, I hope you are not embarrassed sir, that I'm talking to you. Please hold my hands. Jesus, please change our daddy's story. Yeah. Let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, please, we are going to be very fast. You are here for yourself. You are not married. You are standing for something. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracle. Now, we are going to be very fast. You can see it's past nine, but there are so many things we need to do. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is, Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please. Hold on. Overflow 2. Just walk right to the front. You don't have to come here. Overflow 2. The whole of those occupying the roadside, just walk right to the front of your, your stage there. Overflow 1 here. Just walk right to the front here. All those who are here, you can just come out. Come out, organize yourself. You are sick? Or you are standing in for people? Jesus. Listen. If you are standing here for impartation, go back, please. Please, please, don't make a fool of yourself. We are going to pray for you. I know some of you just want me to touch you. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't play games with God. Go back to your seat. You will receive impartation. Some of you, there's nothing wrong. You just want in case if there's something, I should still pray. Go back. Please, we don't have that time. Are we together now? I'm not joking. Please, there is no time. Huh? So, those outside, just obey instructions, please. Some of you think, I have to be the one to touch you. That's unbelief. I, I spent time talking about faith here. Just walk outside, stand there, overflow. Look at how many people, Pastor, for God's sake. Look at this. Look at how many people. Huh? Almost everybody. Look at standing for somebody. The devil wants to destroy people. Have you noticed that in the last one month, there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses? Someone who just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. And I also understand there have been mysterious accidents. You are minding your business, car will jam you, bike will jam you. We are going to take care of all those things today. It's called a miracle service. Now, this is what will happen. Please and please, anybody who lays hands on you, just go back to your seat believing in faith. We don't have time to take testimonies. I know there are so many miracles. If we do that, we're going to spend time here. There are other things we need to do. Are we together now? So I will pray for you. You can see there are so many people. Uh, let's do it this way. Pastor Pete is with me here. So um, Pastor Pete. Ah, no, Ejimi. You know what? Ejimi, Pastor Femi. You can go outside. You can just handle that, that one there. Pastor Alpha. Pastor Alpha, Kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor Ejimi, and 
you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise west promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we are going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father was standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it fast jesus will give you praise i have no other god but you now i have no as they pray for you just quietly you go back to your seat rejoice in go back to your seat check yourself
God, you're the God of miracles, amazing God, say you're the God of wonders, so amazing, 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 you're God of miracles, amazing, help me say, you're the
your prayer requests. I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason. The Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before, before we come to prayer. I know there are people, how far have we gone? Those outside, there's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jakes. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one, and then... Um, Ushers, please let's have the request so that we can finish it because as I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you.
from the four winds of the earth. A mighty presence of the Spirit of God moves from the four winds of the earth. The wind of God's Spirit moves and the mighty hand of God. An angel, mighty, mighty angel, placing his hand upon the servants of God. There will be a quickening, quickening, an awakening. A flame is being set upon many now, upon many, upon your tongue. I see fire. I see fire. The Lord puts a word in season for you. Aya. Oh, let ready of si prom beliete salioste. Some of my worship people here, the Lord will place upon you an unction for worship, a strong unction. David, down the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing. An anointing is to come upon you. Pare sufreting da ilo si predia. Rekito fiesta kila handa ha. Bora kete shubelenda pragadose. Rekete gabaka kokosho ke palagana. Renda pa freia so palenda ha. Resa profilesa kalionde. Bara soko palagada. I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now. Upon the feet of many. The fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire quickening. My God. Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Tonight, by the power of God's Holy Ghost, by the power of God's Holy Ghost, by the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are. Standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, you build your throne. And as we Jesus, and take, take your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We are going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We are praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus.
want us to know about let's start from Jeremiah 29 let's start from there Jeremiah 29 let's be fast there are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because I want to establish a few things Jeremiah 29 verse 11 are we there okay Want to read everyone is projected. This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? An expected end. A predictable end. Please listen to me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. These thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any good report, if there be any virtue and, and any praise, he said, think on these things. And so God is saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said they are thoughts of good and not of evil. This is God speaking. And those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end. A predictable end. Not an unexpected end. Not an unpredictable end. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts that I think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Hallelujah. Point number one. The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please, very quickly. Write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures. God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please. Everyone read. One, two, read. Psalm 91 verse 
One more time. This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life, will I give him? Did he say, will I give him? That means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity. Are you getting blessed? It says, for with long life, will I satisfy him? And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23 verse 26 please media you'll be really fast you'll help us there are lots of scriptures to look at and all of them are important we're establishing the first point tonight that it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest Exodus 23 verse 26 23 26 hallelujah everyone read The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen people I want you to realize that. Um, I'm a human being. I understand that many of us are receiving these points with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one. But the Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. A believer is not just one who has given his heart to the Lord. A believer is one who has submitted to the authority of God's word as the final say. Regardless of your experience, this is what makes you a believer. It's, you are not a believer just because you were born again. You are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of God take precedence and become the final authority over your life. Say amen. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? You must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven. You are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband. Even if she does not like the way he's behaving. Even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage, her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love god when you can explain things to be a believer is that in the midst of your joy in the midst of your tears in the midst of your clarity in the midst of confusion regardless of what happens in your life the word of god stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life is god speaking to us are we growing as believers this is a very mature teaching tonight if you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of god above your life you will backslide and you will run away from god that's why we have many atheists today many of them were church children many of them were folks in baptist and presbyterian churches but their lives were surrounded by so much confusion and because they think that god has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds after a prolonged period of disappointment, that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits. And their conclusion is that God is a liar. And their conclusion is that the Bible is not true. Their conclusion is something is wrong. There is a deceit somewhere. But the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger, rich in love, from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art God hallelujah it is God's desire
for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Do you believe that? Point number two. Make sure you're writing. Point number two. The Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. The Bible did not hide it from us. It didn't leave it as a secret. It's clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire, it is absolutely possible, supported by scripture, that a man can die before his time. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life. This is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight, but it will test your love for God. The Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Ecclesiastes 7.17, quickly. Ecclesiastes 7.17 and Psalm 55 verse 23. We'll look at those. Ecclesiastes 7.17. The Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted. Not only can the life be cut short, the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted 717 Ecclesiastes Hallelujah Okay let's just let's just turn while they are trying to help her Okay Hallelujah Go ahead and read everyone one to read Why should thou die before your time? We are still going to revisit this verse. It says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou what? Die. It's a question. It's just the, the B part I want us to focus on. Why? It's a question. That means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions, the same way God designed for everyone to be prosperous. The Bible says that, um, how did he put it now? He says, the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all. But there are people today who love God and they are still poor. Is that true? There are people today who love God and cannot afford to feed their children. But it does not stop the fact that God is a loving God and he has shown a formula for prosperity. Why should thou die before your time? So the Bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time. Psalm 55 verse 23. 55 verse 23. Are we there? Alright, go ahead and read everyone. Those outside, we apologize. Looks like they are not seeing the projection, but just follow us very carefully. One to read. Shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what? Half their days. They will not even live up to half their days. Now, forget that he's talking about wicked people. I'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added, can be cut short, can be multiplied, can be divided, can be subtracted. This is the infallible word of God. Hallelujah. So although God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest, the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Write it down. The Bible reveals 
that God is never behind us dying before our time. Isaiah 65 verse 20. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you. reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of Isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read This is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God. He says, there shall be no more infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days, for a child shall die a hundred years old. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, but as many as believed him, he gave them power to become. As many as believed him, he gave them power to become. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Ezekiel 18 verse 32. Ezekiel. Go ahead and read. One to read. Stop. For what? One more time. One more time. This is God speaking. One more time. Read on. Do you believe this? Please, listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me of of um, you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families and this is consistent I have been to mortuaries I have prayed for people we have lost loved ones in far and near and all kinds of things have happened but I choose to be a believer I choose to be a believer I lift 
my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel. Say it, the Lord God. Wherefore, as a result of the above, turn yourselves and leave ye. Next point. This is a very serious one, and I want us to pay attention to it. Ready? Satan, comma, the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys. John 10, 10, please. Satan, the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys write this before we look at the scripture in continuation he has strategies through which he achieves this mission Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys he has strategies through which he achieves this mission. Continue writing. Topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Topmost among these strategies as sicknesses you can write afflictions too suicide accidents these are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives these are his most common strategies 95 percent 95 percent of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides accidents of all sorts fire all kinds of things destruction John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not, meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this, to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus, the son of the living God said, I am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief, Satan, there are many names that he's given in the Bible. He's given the serpent. He's given the dragon. He's given the thief. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the adversary. He's called the destroyer. And Satan has a strategy. Please let me have your attention now. Satan has a strategy. There is a series by the grace of God on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently and under that series of angels I'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called Satan praise the Lord I want us to look very carefully in that series There are a few things about Satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser. Do you know now many of you are going to be surprised 
But do you know that of all wicked spirits, Satan is not the most dangerous. There are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain. They were deliberately not released because the Bible says if they are released, even the elect will not stand. The question is, at what point were they bound? And what did they do? Hallelujah. When you begin to read, don't turn there, the book of Ezekiel 28. The Bible begins to speak of an ancient king. We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels. Look up. Many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels. No. No. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelio and it means a messenger. Let me tell you a few things. Look up please. When Ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called Lucifer. The Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things I think it's important we get this look, look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what i'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious capon is still lingering around abu are you getting what i'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point point? and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what I'm saying? He's an illegal occupant. He's not a student, but he has refused to leave that territory. Watch out for him. He has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students. U61, U62, U60 whatever, till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of ABU. Have you heard what I'm saying? That ABU, that's why when you measure it, you find out that you are young, but they tell you ABU is 50 years, whereas you are just four years. Are, are you getting my analogy? Is it making sense to you? When he was the student, he was not the most notorious student. He was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history. There are other notorious students, cultists that were driven away. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university. Now watch this. Let me tell you something. I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us, but we'll have that series by the grace of God. Did you know 
that angels were once mortal beings. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth. Their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like imagine that Jesus comes now I hope you know when Jesus comes our dispensation is ended but the program of God still proceeds we do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas but we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come and there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so I guarantee you, we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization. But not the last as far as creation, as far as, as advancement, as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know. Who knows? Maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of God if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of God in that dispensation they will call us angels I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not, the Bible does not record, the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven. Is that true? So if in the earth, in my earth life, for instance, this was my wife, these were our children. When we get to heaven, we all become brothers and sisters. Are you getting what I'm saying? We all become brothers and sisters. I can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants. And they can look at me and say, wow, who is this strange being? But they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life. It is this aberration that was, that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation. This is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said, forget the people you are seeing now, they have been before. Listen, the dispensation before our own, there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them. There was nothing called invisible and visible. That concept did not exist. Are you getting my point? The dispensations before us, you could access the heavens and access the earth. Now, it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning. So, Adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation. We never had the opportunity to see what we could do. For instance, there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction. They recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if Adam did not fall and Eve would have had the opportunity because he still would have given birth. You understand? He would have given birth in his perfected state. We would have seen the son of Adam. A womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature. That's why in all of the dispensations it's only our dispensation that brought Jesus, the son of the living God, to come and die. Please, let's continue that's for another time i'm just trying to show you that the one you call satan lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation the king of tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with satan 
were the brains behind the building of the Tower of Babel. They were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was. That was why Solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Geography today, geography, they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth they have found ancient castles did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water not land the same way that place where is the mount of ararat where the the ark of noah rested where is it in the earth today we know everest to be the highest where is mount ararat Where are the golds? Where is the temple of Solomon that was built with pure gold? You mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold? Let me tell you, most of them are still intact. They are buried in the sea. Because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu. It's the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit Are we blessed very quickly keys to long life the first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest they all complement themselves you don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go no there are keys there are keys Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it. The first key to long life is to release it. Hallelujah. Ready? Look up. Let's read Psalm 34 verse 12. One to read. What man is he that desireth what? Life. And loveth what? Many days that he may see good. Read on. Keep what? There is a relationship. Stop. Between your tongue, its communication, and your life. The Bible says, who is it that desire long life? It says, keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from what? Speaking guile. 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The emphasis is 12 and 13. Who is he, Koinonia, that desires long life? I don't die, oh. The Bible says, who is he that desires long life? Don't just laugh about what I'm saying. 
because whether you think you are joking or not the bible says and let it not be said before an angel i made a mistake who is he that wants to activate longevity it says keep the please go to verse 13 13 13, 13. it says keep thy tongue from what and your lips keep your tongue i know many of you have said kai people have begged they are exaggerating why do you want to speak please be real you be real in the earth way you will die like a chicken your reality must be the word he says i am the way i am reality i am absolute reality hallelujah proverbs 18 21 can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. hallelujah are you blessed the bible says i set before you this day blessing and cursing is that true death and life here's my suggestion i can't force you but this is my suggestion choose life that you may live not wish it choose life koinonia choose life that you may live are you still a believer choose life that you may live choose life i set before you blessing and cursing i set before you death and life but this is my advice for you choose life i speak life oh my brother I speak life Head and not a tail You will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life Hallelujah Everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it i choose life those standing at the back the back there can you say i choose life don't let the devil tell you i hope you know what you're saying say it i choose life he said let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so conquer fear i choose life when you speak you release it this is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released I choose life send it to the atmosphere I choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow I choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen Jesus said behold I Jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking I cannot enter until your will permits me as mighty as Jesus is he respects the will of man how much more Satan Jesus the son of the living God the resurrected Christ the eternal one stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years if that man refuses he goes to hell but he was knocking 
so what do you think makes you think that satan just steps into your heart it's called deception this is the foundation of witchcraft it paints a picture that is not real it makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to ha wreak havoc in your life say it again i choose life say it again i choose life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? Say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, Did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. Key number two to longevity, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Biblical key number two to longevity. Under the word fear, write reverence. Reverence, the fear, open bracket, reverence of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Everyone read. One, two, read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him and His ways and what He represents prolongs days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. There are two indexes given in the Bible to measure the fear of the Lord in a man's life. Number one, obedience to his commands. And number two, service in the house of God. Obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the Lord. Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I love him. I obey him. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me. And I exalt your whole. Exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me days shall be what and the years of thy life shall be increased and so the lord spoke to isaiah he said go and tell hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness you will die and hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said oh lord remember how i have walked diligently before you and the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh, 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 uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, the Lord said, I have added. For by me, Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied. And the years of his life 
shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me, don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you self. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. There are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself. Hallelujah. When five minutes without your breath, you are gone. It doesn't matter what your agenda is. It's over. The greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God. That's how you cheat death. That's how you cheat the grave. That's how you cheat death. You don't cheat death by being afraid of it. You cheat death by serving God. Victorious in life and victorious in death. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. I'm saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. When will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life? Say, I'm not a man of God, I'm a pilot, so what? That my life be offered, oh God, on the altar of sacrifice. That I will serve you. I told God, this is all I do with my life. I don't have plan B. When I wake up in the morning, your kingdom come, oh God. That's all I do. Are you getting blessed? Service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. With all my life, I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it. As though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands. You go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week and there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God. There, 
there's no service for the kingdom it's not part of their lives they come and they warm the bench and smile around and you tell them are you serving any believer that is not serving in a church not serving in a group your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom you don't deserve to live he says i shall not die but live but live there is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom god will kill a nation to preserve that man i travel all the time don't you think i don't know what i'm saying tomorrow we are on our way again to be there all the time i've seen all varieties of accidents i've seen all kinds of things i've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations we have met armed robbers we were going to um when we were going to obama shop our flight was cancelled we had to charter a car to take us by road we left about 4 30 in the morning just coming out of abuja abaji going towards just entering the route to go towards Kogi, and we saw somebody reversing there were armed robbers brothers and sisters this gentleman speaking to you i'm not a fool are you getting what i'm saying i'm educated but i want to tell you something the fear of the lord can prolong the days of a man that you spend your life serving god during the days of our fathers the popular song is lord here am i send me right now we are saying lord here am i give me i have come i finally arrived to collect see let me tell you don't just laugh if you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your christian experience you will be unfruitful in the kingdom i want to stand before my maker I can only imagine what it would be like. Ah, what's the song? You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. That on that day when I stand before him. When we are finally done. And we have conquered the earth. Depopulated the kingdom of hell. And brought, turned the heart of many to righteousness. That through faith after we have subdued kingdoms. And wrought righteousness. We will stand upon the mountain and salute creation. And say Lord I am ready. And you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going God said we, we were watching you too. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me i saw the way he was saluting me and i said i was wondering what was this for and he called me and he said sir about three years or thereabout when you came into this campus i was just a fresh student when i came in and when you preached i got born again i got filled with the holy spirit and today i'm still standing and doing many things every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people i say lord thank you i have no business being known they don't need to know me that i may decrease that my face cannot heal anybody my picture cannot bless anybody there is one mightier than i he's the one i live and i spend my entire life serving please
this I speak to you as a servant of God tonight. Think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Possible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my enemy. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. So if your work is to bring this water, you bring it with all sense of honor. Not just like you are worshipping a man. Oh, it's a privilege to serve in the house of God. It's a privilege. If you are to clean the chairs, you are cleaning the chairs and say, Lord, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. You can do without me. You have chosen to do with me. You are supposed to bake the cake. You are seated and you know you have grace. You say, no, I need to join the welfare department. I must spend my life. I, I need to contribute. You are excellent in graphic. Oh, the media needs me. Service. 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 Whether you are in Zaria or not, find a church. Find a group. Find a fellowship. Find a, a congregation of believers. Many of us are looking for Gio and Mama. That's the only condition you have given God to serve him. Lord, I will serve you if I will be the mama of the ministry. I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish. The name of your parish is nothing. Let it be your passion. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? I'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit. Because I don't want you to waste your time. Please get back into the mystery of kingdom service. Get back. You spend your time serving a guy because you love him. You go to his house. You wash his clothes. You cook. You iron. And he says, is it not too much? You say, this is the least I can do for you. Is it to express my love? I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Call me a fool. It's true. Eh? If loving you is a crime, let me be a criminal. Look at what you are saying. Look at what you are saying. Shame on any believer who is saying that. I'm telling you, I say it again. Shame on any believer. That because of mundane things, you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Skapaka prondo sopro silia paharatu sufratia. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life 
together with these shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of god his commandments are not burdensome brothers and sisters let's hurry up key number three to long life engaging the mystery of the blood key number three let's hurry up engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding There are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance. Number one. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us in the communion, the communion. In the New Testament, he began to teach us the mystery of the communion. And then number three, the mystery of what the Bible calls blood sprinkling. That the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them. First Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30. We may not have time to read all, but let's see how far we can go. Help us media. First Corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next verse. It says, after the same manner he took the cup, here and there, 25, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. Wherefore, whosoever, now listen, shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. Open your eyes, I want to show you a mystery. Unworthily. It says, this sacrament, there are two sacraments that Jesus left to the church. One is the sacrament of the communion. The second is the sacrament of baptism. Water baptism. Two of them are still valid. They are important today. It says, Whosoever shall take up the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of what? The body and the blood of the Lord. Here comes the mystery. 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what? He can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of Jesus Christ relieves life. And because he's, he's eating it unworthily, he will get the opposite of it. Next verse 30. Read please. One, two, read. Stop. For what cause? For the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was the communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man have, is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause, the cause of not discerning the Lord's body, the cause of not respecting it. For this cause of not giving it the honor, it says many are weak. You believe the Bible, right? Many are what? Sick. And many sleep. Wow. For this cause, trivializing the body of Christ, 
not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going there we don't have the time we have to move on to other things I'm just giving you references Exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the Bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the Lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3 honor to parents both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointing how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of God you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of God just talking and smiling the Bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical it said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor respect I honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please I don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your wivon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother 
How many of you pray for your men of God? How many of you pray for ministers? You stand there criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer. You stand there saying, I always knew. I always suspected. The way I've been looking at that man. You see that? Continue. The Bible says, he that cursed his father and his mother, his lamb, his life will be taken away to obscure darkness. How many have died as a result of dishonor? When a father fights his son, he loses his honor. When a son fights his father, spiritual or physical, he loses his life. That's why many people, sadly to say, many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries, break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew, thinking God called them. Notice, very few of them ever last. Because he that dishonored his father, his lamb will be taken. Are we learning? Number what now? Number five, walking in wisdom. The fifth key to long life. Walking in wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16. Those outside, if you are still with us, say amen. God bless you. All right, Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16. Walking in wisdom. Walking in wisdom. Foolishness can take a man's life. Foolishness can cut short a man's life. Walking in wisdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, happy is the man that what? Finds wisdom. That means you have to look for it. And the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it are better than silver. And the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her. 16. Length of days are in her right hand. And in her left hand riches and honor. If you embrace wisdom. It will also open you up to long life. Look at me. How many people do you know who cannot drive? Hello? They cannot drive. And then they go and carry a truck and kick it. Because they are trying to impress their colleagues. Are you seeing how foolishness cuts short the life of people? And then they go to the road. They have given the spirit of death unrestrained access. How many people drive their cars? Foil is leaking down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Foil is leaking and they don't care. There are people who, who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus. They connect it directly to the carburetor and from the, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running. They are smiling. How many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal. The tire is so it is the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight. That's the degree to which the car is disaligned. And yet he plans to travel to Lagos. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Are we blessed? A man takes beer, alcohol, and tells you, can I give you a ride? He says, really? You get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that's been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut. Life wire. They dry their clothes and smile. They have been doing it. I, I know how to do it. No, no, no. I'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives. You plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie. There are many of us, the way you own your car, there is something only you know how to touch. You touch the wires and then something down. You just touch it and you see what? Cas, cas, and then the thing starts. You've been doing it for many years. 
preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you will see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school Is God teaching us wisdom? There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil. You buy one jerry can of foil and keep it close. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God, you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with, 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 with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy, that's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? scientifically proven we're, we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things it's only god that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire you made yam the water is boiling you want to use your hand to carry it out can't you look for spoon if the spoon is missing can't you be patient why must you cut you you came complete why must you go back with one hand yes you will make heaven but is that a rich life is that a rich life why will you cut short your life because of carelessness it's god speaking to us Number six, the sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We're getting deeper now. We're getting to the area where we are going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Manda pronda Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold see don't be ignorant i give you power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over how many how many all the powers of the enemy he says and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what i'm saying now let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic a subtopic under point six the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 may i remind you ladies and gentlemen if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real are you hearing what i'm saying if anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft i just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 
Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 Proverbs 1 11 and then Psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up everyone read want to read there shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what pass through fire or that uses divination or an observer of times an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer next verse for all that do these things are an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god doth drive them out before thee god himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world there are enchanters there are stargazers there are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men the church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft that sell what look at what she sells she can see look at her goods the way you sell pure water the mistress of witchcraft and say you can come and meet me and i will give you africa i can give you this village i can sell that soul to you it's in your bible he says she sells what nations through her wardom her fraternity with human beings that means human agents come to meet her i want access to a territory and what does she sell again families is that in your bible is that in your bible that there are witchcraft activities that sell families let's look at two scriptures quickly ezekiel 13 17 to 23 is a long reading let's rush are you still with me all right let's hurry up to 23 likewise son of man set thy face against the daughters of thy people which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them lord god woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what handkerchiefs what version is this okay it's okay upon the head of every stature hey let me show you what the bible is saying where's my handkerchief they sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what to do what to hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men they take on a handkerchief put it on a statue and call your name it's in your bible they have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you that is a nice world for as long as you just say god i'm here and i love you everything is all right welcome to planet earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival they hunt souls he said will ye hunt the souls of my people they are hunting they are everywhere let me tell you especially for africa please don't pretend like you are coming from the caribbeans you were born an african you belong to an african family and you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of god will not need to go through this but for now we must pay that price are you there will ye save the souls alive that come unto you next verse let's look at it quickly and will ye people oh and will ye what me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread to slay what read that part to slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead 
it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended it's still being practiced today men who give others for their lives I prophesy to you any man that invokes your name on any altar as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives they will carry their dead body from that altar I say it again in the name of the Lord Jesus that any charm any altar that invokes your name to die the death of another may my God visit them with judgment Next, next verse. Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls, to make them fly. Watch this. Look at the mystery of witchcraft. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt, to make them fly. We're in verse what now? Two verses left. Your handkerchiefs, I will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody is walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit And deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that I am the Lord your God let's read 22 because I can't read all those ones whom I have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those covens tonight catch fire may those covens catch fire Proverbs 1 verse 11 Proverbs 1 verse 11 Shabarato Totobaya Watch this If they say come with us let us lie and wait for what Let us do what Let us wait for blood Let us lock privately for the innocent without cause Meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12. when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real 
they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it there is an advantage that wicked spirits have they have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom and so he gave us angels Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 don't turn there just write it Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14 Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel project for us project for us 2nd Kings 19 verse 35 2nd Kings 19 verse 35 while she's doing that in the book of Daniel chapter 10 when you read from verse 13 the Bible says that Archangel Michael contended with the prince of Persia he was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy Daniel but Daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer when we pray we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second Kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan. So angels fight to preserve our bodies. They fight to preserve our lives, preserve our bodies, preserve our destinies. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Read verse 11. Want to read. For he shall give what? his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20 psalm 103 verse 20 please begin to prepare the oil there's, there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly. Very quickly. Quickly. Bring the oil for me, please. Don't open it yet. Just bring it. These are the instructions that the Lord gave me. Psalms 103 verse 20. Go ahead and read. One to read. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do what his commandment. How do they walk? Hearkening. They walk at the instance of his word. They walk at the instance of his word. As you pray and declare the word, you activate them. You activate them. You activate them. As you speak God's word, the moment they hearken to the word, they
they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people i don't do foolish things give me the oil i'm not one of those men of god that just does things impulsively and the lord gave me an instruction he said when i was done with that retreat i should come back and based on two scriptures the lord gave me isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande brando suso she bros satalande kras kobrash tilaba. She bros zetetete baladabaya. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder. It shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that hunt your soul unto death, it shall come to pass. That by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth, the avenger of men, that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word, that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. There are charms that must be broken because of the anointing. There are people sentenced to death sentenced to accidents sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture exodus chapter 12 please please everyone turn there i sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now please turn there this is the instruction that the lord gave me Make sure everyone is participating right now. No matter how far, those following us online, they can get oil if, if they have access to. Verse 7, please. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance I am the Lord this is what the Lord told me in the secret place he said I'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent Christ before me that's what the Lord told me and the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the Lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft i had the lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and i saw like a cloud moving across territories and the lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why i'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her hey, the set time inside and outside pray Zakatatatata 
Ropotos koto pekete Lekete prosopatia Hallelujah Can we have the plates please very quickly Lift your voice and say after me In the name of Jesus Come on say it like a believer In the name of Jesus Every power Of witchcraft Manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood I command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray I shall not die but live to declare in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers those that trade the souls of men they cut short destinies through our Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare the seal of the blood over my life, my loved ones, my going out, my coming in. No accident shall take my life. No terrorist shall take my life. No sickness shall take my life. I am secure in Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your loved ones. No death. No death. No death. The destroyer cannot plague my life. The destroyer cannot plague my family. The destroyer cannot plague my destiny. My going out. Preserve. Coming in. You are looking at this olive oil but this is no ordinary oil the lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit and that's exactly what i've done and lord i lift this in the name of jesus i come under this apostolic office in the name of the lord jesus and i declare that over this territory of zaria over koinonia over our families the plague of death will not find expression 
it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of Jesus Christ father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of Jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and Lord let this carry preservation power in the name of Jesus now watch this we're going to do it very orderly and very fast I prayed for this I will anoint the heads of department um, two of them will go outside they will just be in front your job is to walk orderly I'm sure they'll coordinate them just take a portion put it on your head and come back and blast in tongues begin to blast preservation begin to speak and release life to yourself hallelujah go ahead and begin to pray